Welcome to the Historian's Eye podcast for Jackson Spillvogel's Western Civ textbook, 10th edition. Chapter 1, The Ancient Near East, The First Civilizations. During the Neolithic, or New Stone Age, revolution, also sometimes called the Agricultural Revolution, significant changes in living patterns happened, the most significant of which was in the production of food and the domestication of plants and animals, an event that first occurred in the upland regions of the Middle East Fertile Crescent. Permanent villages of up to a few thousand people replaced nomadic bands. Pottery was made from clay, and goods were accumulated and traded. A division of labor appeared, and eventually men became the dominant gender because of their labor in food production. Increasing complexity led to the further development of what is called civilization. Civilization is a complex society that is held together by common characteristics, including living space or cities, religious beliefs, a government of some sort, warriors to defend the civilization, artesian and scribes to beautify and record, and a social hierarchy. What makes civilizations different from a really big tribe or clan which can have most of those same characteristics, is that a civilization is comprised of people who aren't of the same clan or tribe, but still share those characteristics. It means they begin to form a new identity as Sumerians or Babylonians, and not just as members of a certain clan or family. Civilization is developed elsewhere in the world, but in the West it was in the river valleys of Mesopotamia, or the land between the rivers in this case the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and in Egypt where civilization first appeared. By 3000 BCE, ancient Mesopotamia was a city-state civilization in Southwest Asia, created by a people known as the Sumerians. The rivers were tamed but remained unpredictable, affecting both the religion and the arts, notably in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Priests and kings held a monopoly of power. Ziggurats, or temples, were constructed of brick. Trade and commerce expanded, although most of the inhabitants were farmers. Writing on clay tablets in a system known as cuneiform, or wedge-shaped characters, also began. Located on flat plains, the city-states were vulnerable to invasion. The result was the creation of a series of empires, beginning with the Akkadians, about 2340 BCE, later followed by the Babylonians, famous for Hammurabi's law code, about 1750 BCE. The centrality of religion was exemplified in the epics of Enuma Elish and Gilgamesh. Civilization also developed along Egypt's Nile River, a more predictable river than those in Mesopotamia, and Egyptian religion reflected its more benign nature. The Nile also served as a unifier of ancient Egypt, and surrounded by desert, Egypt was less subject to invasion. Egyptian pharaohs were perceived as gods, unlike the rulers of Mesopotamia, and their tombs were the pyramids that were constructed during the Old Kingdom, about 2575 to 2125 BCE. Religion was at the core of Egyptian society, culture, and politics not least in the various divine manifestations of the ever-present sun. A quest for immortality developed, particularly among the cult of Osiris, and mummification became widespread during the Middle Kingdom, about 2125 to 2010 BCE, whose end coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos people. Native rule resumed during the New Kingdom, about 1539 to 1069 BCE, an era of Egyptian imperialistic expansion throughout much of the Middle East. During the 1330s BCE, a potentially radical religious revolution began with the pharaoh Amenhotep IV, who assumed the name Akhenaten, in honor of his god Aten, god of the sun disk. His actions in closing the temples devoted to the other gods alienated the priesthood, particularly the priests of the powerful god Amun-Re. After his death, the old gods were restored, 
but in his religious pursuits, Akhenaten had neglected foreign policy, and Palestine and Syria were lost from Egyptian rule. In the 1200s BCE, the so-called Sea Peoples invaded Egypt, and during the next millennium, Egypt was often dominated by foreign empires, such as the Assyrian, Persian, and Macedonian. In the late 1st century BCE, Egypt became a Roman province. Farming appeared in Europe's Balkans about 650 BCE, and in Central Europe by 4000 BCE. A characteristic of European societies during these millennia was the construction of large stone structures, or megaliths, the most famous being England's Stonehenge. Indo-European speakers migrated into Europe and the Middle East around 2000 BCE. One Indo-European group, the Hittites, established a kingdom in Asia Minor about 1700 BCE, and during its heyday the Hittite Empire was one of the most formidable powers in Western Asia, assimilating other cultures into its own. They, like the Egyptians, were attacked by the Sea Peoples and by aggressive tribespeople known as the Gazga, and by 1190 BCE Hittite power had ended.